This is what the war in Ukraine looks like on one of China's most widely followed state media accounts. The Wall Street Journal analyzed nearly 70 Ukraine-related videos that were posted since the start of the war in February. The account has also been amplifying Russian narratives, like calling the conflict a special operation and not an invasion. These videos also reminded followers to watch Russia's Victory Day parade, and the Russian president appeared five times more often than his Ukrainian counterpart. This pro-Russia perspective is just one message that's been echoed on Chinese state media and getting shared with a wide audience. I do think that's kind of a propaganda opportunity or persuasion opportunity for, uh, for the Chinese government. We examine how closely Chinese state media is aligned with Russia, despite Beijing's efforts to present itself as a neutral party to the war in Ukraine. From day one, China hasn't outright condemned Russia or taken part in Western sanctions against Moscow. China-Russia relationship has been growing closer. Maria Rebnikova is a political scientist fluent in Russian and Chinese, and she's been monitoring how Chinese state media has been reporting on the Ukraine conflict. She says their pact has gotten stronger as both countries' relationships with the U.S. have gotten more contentious. So we see this kind of increasing closeness of their ties as one fact to the geopolitical relationship itself. And examining how the war is being covered on Chinese state media reveals Beijing's tilt towards Russia, like the People's Daily account on China's version of TikTok. In the nearly 70 videos published on this account, which has about 150 million followers, none of them show destruction caused by Russian forces or describe how civilians cope with the ongoing fighting. 14 of the posts are clips from China's foreign ministry, which often repeats a common line from Moscow with dramatic music. Some reports, the way they frame or kind of explain pro Russia stance is often very much in this anti US, anti NATO um, rhetoric. There are 10 clips of Putin, and they also echo a similar sentiment. The decision to single out sound bites like this show a deliberate attempt from Chinese state media to paint the West as the villains of the Ukraine crisis. Meanwhile, only two videos of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made it into the feed, and both clips show him saying Western leaders aren't doing enough. People's Daily didn't respond to a request for comment. Some Chinese state media organizations have been getting specific directives on how to cover the war. Two days ahead of the invasion, an online video platform that's part of a larger state-backed publication posted this on Weibo, China's equivalent to Twitter. It appeared to be instructions for its staff. The memo said posts that are unfavorable to Russia or are pro-West should not be published. The post was later removed from Weibo. The company and Horizon News didn't respond to a request for comment. This leak, what it's maybe showing us, is it kind of this attempt to maybe, yeah, we spin this war in a particular direction? Journalists in China are limited in what they can write about, which can be observed on the country's primary international news network. In one news report posted on CGTN's Facebook account, which has more than 118 million followers, two journalists documented their journey from Lviv to Kyiv. Just one hour drive from Kyiv. They're not allowed to be maybe too sympathetic or too pro-Western or too pro-Ukraine. We definitely see more debris and ruins uh, after brought by the uh, conflict and crisis. And they have to kind of say it's happening, but they're not able to provide the context or maybe include more footage of various victims that would provide the context. CGTN did not respond to a request for comment. Much of that context was missing from Chinese state media when mass graves were discovered in the Ukrainian town of Bucha. The incident triggered global condemnation, with many countries calling for an investigation into alleged atrocities committed by Russia. There's nothing less happening than major war crimes. Responsible nations have to come together to hold these perpetrators accountable. But the story was largely ignored by most Chinese media outlets, while the Kremlin called videos from Bucha fake without presenting any evidence to back the claim. Beijing described the images of the civilian deaths as deeply disturbing, but warned against making quote-unquote unfounded accusations. As the war stretches on, choosing not to condemn Russia for its actions, like in Bucha, could put Beijing in a tricky position. China still very much cares about its relations with the West, especially for economic reasons. But uh, I think it's very important to not necessarily ruining this uh, competitive edge by over-aligning with Russia. 
So Beijing has officially maintained a neutral stance amid the war, and this diplomatic position hasn't contradicted what's been published on state media. It's definitely using it as an opportunity to assert its stance and its rise as distinct from and arguably also counter to the West, questioning the role of the U.S., critiquing the U.S. So as long as the U.S. is portrayed as a global troublemaker, the war in Ukraine remains a useful tool for Russia to justify its invasion and China to boost its image to audiences at home and abroad.